Well, the NBA season finally comes to a close tonight, and it got me thinking about last year's strike shortened campaign. I think without a doubt, the quality of play that you have seen this year in the playoffs uh, has been much better than you saw last year in the postseason. I think the quality of play that you saw during the regular season was definitely better as well because last year with the strike shortened season, you had so many teams playing two games in three nights, four games in five nights because they tried to squeeze as many games possible into a compacted uh, schedule. Uh, problem is, I think from a gambling perspective, I think last year was more compelling than this year, however, because you had so many more games every single night of the week. You had a condensed schedule, and it meant that you didn't have to focus on the NBA, you know, November and December when most people didn't care. Remember, the strike shortened season a year ago opened on Christmas Day. At that point, college football was done. The NFL regular season had a week to go first two months of the NBA season. Great time to make money. I certainly did. If you followed me, you certainly did this year. But the fact is that most people just don't care about it. So just a little looking back in time. Looking forward, of course, did I not give you the Spurs in game number six as well? Well, I am uh, undefeated with my free picks in the uh, finals, and I'm going to give you another one here for your Game 7 coming up in just a moment, plus a baseball complimentary play as well. Hi, everyone. Al DeMarco here. This, of course, is going to be your video report for this Thursday. A number of promotions going on. Let's first talk about Brian Rosica. A guy who I added to the site February 5th. This is a guy who uh, I was introduced to by Anthony Red, a guy who had been um, serving as a odds maker for one of the world's largest offshore sports books based out of Costa Rica. He did that for about a year. Wasn't for him. Came back to Vegas, met him through A Red, added him to the site back on uh, February 5th. Got off to a phenomenal start, best start of any handicapper ever here at the site. Hit like 17 of his first 18 plays, 22 of his first 24, something like that. Like everybody, he eventually cooled off. But has he heated up at the right time or what, guys? Today, he goes for his 100 dime winner number six in a row in the finals. Six in a row in the finals. Two, three, four, five, six. Every one of those games so far in the finals, he's had 100 dime play, either a side or total, and he's hit every single one of them. And the last four of those winners you've gotten either at half price or some type of tremendous discount along the way. And today, you're going to get another tremendous discount as well. Keep in mind, $10 bettors, since he joined the site February 5th, have won $11,640. And tonight, he's got his Heat Spurs winner. And once again, it's a total. Just like his total on the uh, over in game number six, just like his total winner on the over in game number five. And you can save $50 on his 100 dime NBA Finals winner number six in a row simply by using this coupon code ROSICA50. His last name, R O S I C A, and the number 50. ROSICA50 will get you that play from Brian Rosica, his 100 dime winner number six in a row. Uh, your one of your other promotions today, you can make your own discount. Pick the handicapper you want to choose. Um, save $30 off of any handicapper's play, pick, package, whatever today. It's a one-time usage coupon. Use this coupon code 30FINALS. That's with an S at the end. 30FINALS. 30FINALS will save you $30 off a single purchase today here at the site. Uh, Anthony Red has simply been phenomenal here as I keep going to him, as I have done from the beginning of the NBA playoff season a couple months ago. I told you I was going to make it my mission to acquaint you with betting totals. And I would say it's been a very profitable acquaintance and relationship for both of us because I have consistently turned to the handicappers here at the site when they have had big total plays in the postseason, and they have hit over the course of the postseason at nearly 73%. And A-Red has been one of the biggest, biggest contributors of them all. Today, he's going for playoff winner number 11 out of 15. He's on an 11-4 and four roll overall the past 13 days, making a $10 better, $4,110 in that 13-day stretch. Today, not only NBA playoff winner number 11 out of 15, but 75-dime basketball winner number 11 out of 16. It's the Spurs Heat over under, and you get it as the $5 play of the day. Keep in mind, 
He's 5-1 in the series, including three total winners in a row. In fact, you got a 75-dime baseball total winner on Saturday with Seattle and Oakland under in a 4-0 shutout by the Mariners for $5. You got his Game 5 total winner uh, in the over on Sunday, $5. Tuesday night, you got his Game 6 total winner, the over, for $5. And again, you are going to get his total winner today, another 75-dime play, just as strong as all of them for just $5 and save $75 in the process by using this coupon code VEGAS75. VEGAS75. And your final promotion today is the Charity Play of the Week. The Charity Play of the Week, guys. This is a program you know that I started back in March of 2012. Once a week, I pick a handicapper, give you the play for free. If the play wins the following day, I ask you to make an anonymous donation of whatever amount you can afford to give to a charity, an organization, a family that needs some type of financial support. And together, we have created an incredible community of caregivers over the past year and so many months. I have given out, in that stretch, over $2.2 million worth of action. You have, in turn, responded by giving well over a couple hundred, uh, 120, 130,000, I would guess, at this point. I mean, I don't know who you are. I don't know what totals you give. But I would guess it's got to be. Maybe it's close to $200,000. I don't know. But you should be damn proud of yourselves uh, because together we have helped a hell of a lot of people in times of need. Well, today, going for Charity Play of the Week winner, number 15 out of 19. It has lost the last two weeks. I'm just being upfront with you. It has lost the last two weeks. After winning 14 out of 15 weeks, you can afford to lose a couple of weeks in a row. Uh, and the Charity Play of the Week is going to be me because I've got my 10-dime underdog run line lock of the month. That's right, 10-dime run line, underdog lock of the month. It's my second biggest play. Full disclosure, guys. Um, I've won the last two nights. After losing, <laughs> oh, this is awful. After losing, uh, uh, let's see, 13 of the previous 15 days. And before that, I'd won 31 out of 43 days. I hit a slump. It happened. I've won the last two nights. Had a five-dime underdog run line winner last night on Toronto plus a tower 25 over Colorado. You should know me. I'm always confident. I never get down on myself. I never lament the losses. I never celebrate the wins. I'm always confident, especially in baseball, and that's why I'm putting myself on the line again today with the Charity Play of the Week. You can get my play tonight for free simply by using this coupon code. And remember, all the codes and all the thing that I'm talking about are right here underneath the video report. Uh, the coupon code is going to be my first name, Al. And the number 44, AL44. And that'll get you the play for free. Um, okay, let's get to your um, final selection. Listen, I can only imagine. I've been in locker rooms before. You know, I told you I used to be a reporter for uh, six, uh, seven years or so. Uh, I've been in locker rooms before after devastating losses like the Spurs had in game number six. And it's an interesting thing to see how teams rebound in a Game 7 situation or a decisive game situation after suffering such an emotional crippling loss. I think the one thing the San Antonio Spurs have going in their favor is their veterans, their experience. They've been there on an international platform, Ginobili and Parker. Uh, they've been there in the NBA, those two and Tim Duncan before. So this is nothing new. At the same time, the Miami Heat, this isn't a lot of people I've heard in the media say, this is Miami Heat, game number seven, just like in the last round, the Eastern Conference Finals, when they had Indiana. Yeah, but the Pacers came out and played like deers and the headlights. Youthful, inexperienced. The Spurs are not going to be that way. Greg Popovich, hey, listen. Good, great coach. Great coach. Made some really dumb, dumb moves late in that game against the uh, uh, Heat in game number uh, six the other night. But then again... He wasn't responsible for the missed rebounds. He wasn't responsible for the nonstop turnovers. He wasn't responsible for the costly missed free throws by Leonard and Ginobili down the stretch. The fact is, the San Antonio Spurs outplayed the Heat for all but about three minutes of that game in regulation. And they still, still should have won that game, but they didn't. But what are we concerned about tonight? Who's going to win? Who's going to cover? Is it not interesting that the other night, the line moved from seven to six and a half, and today, the line has moved from six to five and a half. Why? Because the public is still in support of the Spurs. Also, you have the Miami Heat with question marks. Have the Heat played that well in the series? Absolutely not. Did the Heat play that well in game number six the other night in a do-or-die situation at home? Absolutely not. I think there's some encouraging signs for the Spurs here. I talked about the law of averages throughout the finals, and has it not normally paid off for you? I'm 6-0 and with the freebies, right? The law of averages, to me, says that Tony Parker is not going to shoot 6-for-23 again. 
in game seven as he did in game number six. That Manu Ginobili is going to take more than five shots and hit more than two of them. That Danny Green, who's been unconscious throughout the postseason, especially in the finals, won't shoot one for seven from the field. Now, Tim Duncan had a monster game. 44 minutes played, you know, 30 points, 17 rebounds. But, you know, only five points came after halftime. And I actually thought that the way the Spurs were dominating down low and funneling the ball into Duncan nonstop early actually hurt their overall game because they are a perimeter-based team. And when they're funneling the ball down in the paint to Duncan, it's like ball movement comes to the stop, even though, in theory, when you're dominating down low, it should open up the perimeter. Now, true. Green, Ginobili, Parker weren't hitting from the perimeter, but I think it also robbed them a little of that perimeter game, and that's the key in this contest. That's the key in this series. When the Spurs have been able to manufacture points from the perimeter, they have exceeded, uh, succeeded. Miami Heat have no inside game. We've seen that repeatedly here, okay? Ray Allen's had a couple of good games in a row. Dwayne Wade, well, now both knees are hurting. I just think the play tonight is to go grab the points with the Spurs. Would I be surprised if they went out right? Absolutely not. And listen, guys, um, you know, I have a small five-dime play on the Spurs as a monster underdog in the series. I'm not bailing out. It's a small five-dime play. It's an underdog price. I'm not going to go the other way. I'm not going to put myself in double jeopardy by betting on the Spurs tonight. And I'm not going to go and try to lay off the wager and think Miami can cover the five and a half points. I think the Spurs might win the game outright. Hey, I could be wrong, but... I've given you six winners so far in the free finals for free, so, you know, cut me a break. But I think San Antonio is to play. Your other free play is going to be uh, Seattle and L.A. Under the total of seven runs. Listen, Phil Hernandez, a 2.32 earned run average, uh, 3-0 with a 1.84 ERA in his last four starts. 12 straight scoreless innings coming into this contest in Anaheim. Uh, Tommy Hansen has won his last two starts since returning from the bereavement list. Four runs and 11 and third innings uh, of work at home against the Yankees and at the Red Sox. Angels won nothing win last night. The Mariners have only scored six runs in the first three games of this series. Um, meanwhile, they've only scored four runs or more. Uh, four times in their last 13 games. So, Angels, just three runs the last couple of nights. So, I'm going to go with the under in this one as your other free pick. That'll do it, guys. Best of luck to you all, and I will catch you again on, uh, what is it, tomorrow? Friday. Yeah, <laughs> Friday, as we start focusing on baseball for the rest of the season and continue to make money.